Bond. 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 James Bond. Johnny, they're trying to censor Ian Fleming. Ian Fleming's bloody James Bond books. What the hell is bloody... Yeah, well, that doesn't surprise me, really. Johnny, there's been talk of messing about with the bloody films for a little while now. Johnny, you just can't go and change things because you don't like it. Uh, do these people realise what they're doing? Bloody... Yeah, making them a bit more bloody uh, uh, woke. Holy shit! So after the Roald Dahl fiasco last week or whenever it was, Johnny, it's no surprise that they'll be going after bloody Ian Fleming. Jesus Christ! Telegraph. We had all the fuss about Roald Dahl recently. Mm. Now, um, Ian Fleming's novels have been rewritten. Yes. Bond has changed. <laughs> Bond's gone woke. Uh, yes. Yes, of course. And that's one thing that we saw with Roald Dahl as well. It's like when you're actually getting into a situation where you're inserting entire sentences, it does get to the point where you think, at what point does this cease to be that individual's novel? And it just becomes a kind of approximation of it for a new audience. Yes, yes, of course. And there was me thinking the greatest threat to James Bond was Blofeld or Scaramanga. I thought his greatest danger came from a terrifying psychopath, someone intent on global domination or a pussy stroking megalomaniac. Holy shit! Are you serious? Or a pussy stroking megalomaniac. But in a stunning plot twist, it turns out that James Bond's greatest foe is virtue signalling sensitivity readers, whose job it is to suck any joy or entertainment out of great literature and find offence anywhere they can. Yeah, right, yeah. During each annual two-month period at GoldenEye, Ian Fleming wrote a new book. 2,000 words in three hours every morning. Each one seemed to be assured of success. Certain people are always criticizing novels with uh, uh, sex and violence in them on the basis that they're going to corrupt our youth. Uh, how do you feel about that? And I meant for uh, warm-blooded heterosexual adults, you know, in beds and railway trains and aeroplanes. They're not meant for schoolboys. Uh, teenagers presumably are reading them, however. Oh, yes, they are, and I think they're enjoying them very much. My son hasn't yet got to read them. He's about 11 and a half. He thinks they're very dull. In one of the books you have Bond referring to uh, his own basically dirty life. Well, of course, spying is a dirty trade, and uh, we all know it. Khrushchev has said so, and so has Alan Dulles. So again, all these people are treating everybody like bloody idiots. Uh, we, can't really, we can't expose them to that. Ooh, we can't expose them to that. I mean, they're just bloody words in a fictional fucking book, for Christ's sake. I mean, they do realise, Johnny, that the characters in all these books and films and Christ and what, not just James Bond and all that, but any fucking book, it's, they're not real. Now, when I first read the bloody James Bond books uh, way back in the day, Johnny, yes, yes, of course, you didn't read them, you were reading fucking comics and stuff. I was, yes, yes, of course. I was reading Ian Fleming, and I found that his books, uh, uh, James Bond in his books, was a fucking homicidal, fucking misogynist, bloody sociopathic fucking murderer. James Bond is a heavy drinking misogynist, um, kills at the drop of a hat. I mean, do you want a film about a bloody homicidal, misogynist, fucking womanizing, bloody murderous bastard, or don't you? He's a fucking homicidal, fucking misogynist, bloody sociopathic fucking murderer. <laughs> And that already cleaned up the bloody image for films. James Bond was a fucking, he was a fucking nutcase. As I've said before on this bloody subject, Johnny, one of the Mona Lisa's tits were hanging out or uh, they saw David's penis, uh, uh, David's Michelangelo's David and said, by Jesus, his dick's about the size of a peanut. We gotta be realistic and give him a good big bloody, a yeah, good big bloody donger. <coughs> but one thing that always amazes me, Johnny, with this sort of shit is, you can have all sorts of bloodshed and violence and shooting and everything. You can have that on a film or in a book or whatever. Hey, yeah, that's all right. It's just, uh, it's just fiction. But whenever you call someone a bloody name or something a little bit, uh, a little bit iffy, maybe racially, it's fucking terrible. We can't show that. Yeah, that's a bloody good point. He wasn't like Roger Moore, let me tell ya. Uh, thank Christ for that.
I mean, to kill a mockingbird, Johnny, you may as well take all the black people right out of the story so it doesn't offend anybody.